Today, we're going to learn about quadratic word problems and how to solve word problems and how to um, identify, I guess, what is like what you're trying to find in a word problem. And so yesterday you watched a video and you did a Desmos on um, like keywords and like where you would find them on a graph. Today, we're not going to be given the graph. We are going to just be given um, an equation and then we need to find all the things. However, like essentially we already know how to do everything we were doing today. It's just, you have to identify what you need to find. So I can apply my knowledge of quadratic equations to solve real world quadratic word problems. And all you need to be able to do with this essentially is find from an equation, which you can, um, the roots, the vertex, the axis symmetry, and then the y-intercept. Um, all of those things are things that you could be asked in the word problems. Um, and you just have to know what's being asked and how to find it. And then you're good to go on word problems. Um, typically the two types of quadratic word problems are one where it asks you to find the roots or when Y is zero, um, or like the landing point, sorry, or the time that it lands or something, or the vertex, which is, is essentially the maximum or minimum height based on whatever the word problem is asking. So, um, you have all of this on paper in front of you. I need you to show work like me. I'm going to be checking your notes. This is like notes for today. Um, and then um, we will be doing this the rest of the week. And so like, if you have questions that come up today and you need more help, I will be back tomorrow and I will be able to answer them. All right, so first problem, obviously you read it. So Jason jumped off a cliff into the ocean in Acapulco while vacationing with some friends. His height as a function of time could be modeled by the function h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 480, where t is time in seconds and h is height in feet. So h is y, t is x. Like you, They're just interchangeable. They use h and t in these kind of problems to represent the height and the time. Um, but it doesn't like that doesn't change anything. H is H is Y, T is X. Um, the second thing that um, is very common with these um, quadratic word problems is this negative 16 in front of the T squared. Oftentimes if we're talking about um, launching something into the air and it falling, fall, falling to the ground, um, that negative 16 is there. And I'm pretty sure that it, that is there because it represents the gravity um, because we don't just, can't just jump in the air and keep going up indefinitely. Um, the middle term, whatever number's there often represents the velocity of the object. And then the last term is the C term, which is always the starting value, um, the y-intercept. So first thing I like to do when I'm doing these is to visualize it, all right? So hopefully yesterday it was pretty easy to like think about what the things were asking you to find on a graph because you had a visual. And so we're gonna kind of draw a rough sketch of what's happening. So this person, Jason is starting at 480 here. He's going up and then he's coming back down. That's how, sorry, my pen doesn't really write a straight line. I'm not sure why. Um, and so he's going up, he's coming back down. So the vertex is obviously the highest point. Um, y is the height, X is time. Um, this would represent where he lands. This is where he starts and this is the maximum point. So the question is how long does it take for Jason to reach his max height? And so yesterday I talked about how like when we have the vertex, we our ordered pair is always time and then like the height. Okay, X is time, Y is height. And so in this case, um, we're, he's being asked how long does it take for Jason to reach his maximum height? We only need the X coordinate of the vertex and the X coordinate of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. That is all we need. All we need to know is how long does it take for Jason to get here? So X equals opposite B over 2A. You've done this 
probably 45 times at this point uh, or more um, so that this shouldn't be that difficult. Also, side note, I will let you use the calculator today, but you still need to be showing all of your steps. You still need to show exactly what I'm showing. It's not, I'm typing everything in the calculator and I'm good to go. You need to show me your steps. So this is negative 16 over negative 32, which is one half or 0 0.5. And so how long does it take for Jason to reach his maximum height? It takes Jason one half of a second to reach his maximum height. Um, I need you to write that in a sentence. I'm not gonna write it in a sentence, but you need to write it in a sentence. So half a second for him to reach his max height. Okay, so next question asks, what is the highest point that Jason reached? So we already know that at half a second, he's at his max height, but now it's asking what is his max height? So now it is asking for the Y coordinate of the vertex. And so we found, the x coordinate we substitute it in to find the y so x is one half so now we figure out what y is so h is what we're finding one half is what we're substituting in again i know it's been a long time since we've used function notation but just a reminder like that's how you substitute it in we're substituting one half everywhere we see t equals negative 16 times one half squared plus 16 times one half plus 480. Again, you can use a calculator, but you still need to show all your steps. Um, I don't think I or you should need one for this part problem though. One half squared is one fourth. Negative 16 times one fourth is negative four. 16 times a half is eight and then plus 480. So four plus 480. So 484. So at time one half, his max height is 484, and then he starts dropping. Um, and so again, you would need a sentence. The highest point Jason reached was 484 feet. All right. I think the next part is still Jason question. So Jason jumped off a cliff. Well, I don't need to reread it. Um, question three, Jason hit the water after how many seconds? So when did Jason essentially land? Like, yes, he's going to go under the water a little bit, but that's not what it's asking. It's asking for when did he hit the water? And our like X axis here, this represents when height is zero. And so height is zero when you're sea level, when you're at the water. Um, so when did he hit the water? We're finding this, which means we are finding a zero, which means the easiest thing for us to do is um, the, I mean, you can see if this is factorable, I think it would just be a lot less time if you simply um, made sure that like you were using, you should use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to erase this so that I have room to use the quadratic formula. But again, we're figuring out when he's landing. So when the height is zero, how many seconds does it take him? So X equals opposite B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times negative 16 times 480, all divided by two times negative 16. Again, this honestly could be factorable. Again, if you can do this, then you, it just might take less time to do this, honestly, unless you make a lot of mistakes with this. So X equals opposite B plus or minus the square root of 256 plus three oh seven two all divided by negative 32. So X equals negative 16 plus, I'm just gonna add 256 and then take the square root of it right away. So one plus 176 it is factorable, I think. And X equals negative 16 minus 176. 
over negative 32. So negative 16 plus 176 divided by negative 32 is going to give us a negative answer. This is negative 5. We don't want to use that number because that time is negative 5 and time can't be negative 5. Um, the other one will give us the negative or the positive answer. And that, oops, that is 6. So t equals 6. So because I got nice numbers, that means it was factorable. Um, but it works this way too. If it's less time to do this, great. If not, factor it. Uh, so Jason will hit the water after six seconds. Again, you should write a sentence. Wow, S-E-C-O-N-D-S, we're good. All right, so another one. A toy, if a toy rocket is launched um, vertically upward from ground level with the initial velocity of 128 feet per second, um, then its height after t seconds is given by the equation h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 128 t um, if air resistance is neglected. So how long will it take for the rocket to return to the ground? Um, so again, this one is... So we're, we're launching a rocket. It is starting at the ground and it's going up and it's coming back to the ground. So I'm being asked how long will it take to get here, which means I'm trying to find the time, which means I'm trying to find a zero. When you don't have a C term, um, factoring it is actually pretty easy or hypothetically pretty easy. Um, so if I were to factor this, I'm going to take out a negative 16 T because if the first term is negative, we always take out a negative. So negative 16, I think that 128 can be divided by 16. If not, I can't actually do this. Yeah. Okay. Negative 16 T. That's what both of them have in common. And that leaves me with T minus eight. Okay. I take a negative out of the first term, which means the second term has to be the opposite. So I'm being asked like, how long will it take for the rocket to return to the ground? Meaning how long will it take for the height to become zero? And so I'm equaling this to zero. And then I split it and I do what we've done so many times this year and solve. So T can equal zero or T can equal eight. Now the T equals zero makes sense for the starting point. That is where it's starting at time zero. The rocket is at zero. Okay, so then it goes up, 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 up. It stops, well, not stops. It turns its direction and goes down and it hits after eight seconds. So it's gonna take the rocket eight seconds to return to the ground. Okay. Oh. Okay. Next question says, after how many seconds will the rocket be 112 feet above the ground? Um, and so this one is asking for, um, how many seconds will the rocket be 112 feet above the ground? And so it's asking for us to say like, okay, we're gonna put 112 in for the height equals negative 16 t squared plus 128 t. And it's asking for us to find t. So we don't know how to find t unless the height is zero, um, which we can do because we've learned how to do this by subtracting 112 from both sides and getting zero is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 128t minus 112. Okay. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to solve for t. You can either see if it's factorable or you can use the quadratic formula to solve. All right. You should have either used the quadratic formula or... Um, Factored. This one is actually factorable. I'll show you how. 
So if I take out a negative 16, I'm left with a positive t squared minus 8t plus 7. And that is factorable. So things that add up to, sorry, negative 8 and multiply to 7 would be negative 7 and negative 1. Okay, so that would give me that um, uh, t minus 7 and t minus 1 are equal to 0. All right, and then t is going to either equal 7 or t is going to either equal 1. And so to figure out if t is going to equal 7 or t is going to equal 1, we kind of